Hey everyone, welcome to another video review. So for tonight, I'd like to do a review of a little tiny kit uh, based off of the art of a remarkable fantasy artist named Luis Royal. His name is R-O-Y-O, -O, first name L-U-I-S. He's quite well known uh, in uh, the circles of fantasy art for his striking images. Um, his art's been also featured in heavy metal magazines and things like that. He's up there with Boris Vallejo, Frank Frazetta, for, you know, in terms of fame, for his uh, fantasy art and surreal, beautiful art. Also known for um, his strikingly beautiful females and female studies. So you would think that um, that type of subject matter would be very popular for garage kits, and you would be right. But understand that in the infancy of garage kits, it was very difficult to sort of translate his art into 3D uh, sculptural form. The same was also true of Boris Vallejo. They did a few kits. Uh, Steve West very famously did a, a set of uh, four from Boris Vallejo's artwork. but. It was just very difficult to do well. Um, digital sculpting just wasn't quite there yet. Everything had to be by hand, and you know, something was lost in the translation. So for the art of Luis uh, Royal, um, uh, again, I apologize if I'm pronouncing his name uh, incorrectly. Uh, there wasn't a lot of great kits um, based on his artwork, and a company named Soul models or soul kits. I think they're based in Korea. They did three model kits based off of the art of Luis Royal and this is their rarest. I think it, I, it might also be like their first. So this is based off an artwork called Wings of Reflection. So if you're interested to see what the actual artwork looks like, please Google that Wings of Reflection Luis Royal. It's an amazing uh, painting, uh, and it's strikingly beautiful, and it's something that you have to give soul models credit for even trying to um, go for it because it just seems on uh, first glance to be an impossible uh, task. It's a, a magnificent fairy. She's sort of looking at this uh, dead soldier or monster, uh, this monster's a fallen uh, into the lake. The lake's surface is crystal clear, and you can see the reflection of the fairy in the clear lake itself. Um, th now that is a next to impossible effect to achieve in statue form. Uh, some people <coughs> try to go for that by putting her actually on a mirror base. Um, but then, of course, you'll get the reflection, but you won't get the effect of the, uh, the pool. You won't get the reflect of the lake. Uh, but be that as it may, um, this is the kit by Soul. It's a, an original, uh, to the best of my knowledge. It's a vinyl kit, which is to be distinguished from resin. A resin, of course, is more like um, polystone. Vinyl is more like plastic. In general, I don't like vinyl kits that much. Um, they kind of remind me, for better or for worse, of almost like toys. But there are some garage kits that only come in vinyl, and this is one of them. Um, she's, again, incredibly rare. They never made a lot of these uh, kits. Uh, they were based in Korea, so you had to you know, deal with the international sales. And I got this from another uh, collector who you know, just didn't have much time to build the kit. And he was from Germany and um, assured me it was an original and you know I bought it from him for a very cheap price I think less than a hundred dollars so uh, it comes with a certain parts so let me explain um, the actual kit itself just comes with the fairy the wings the shield the sword and of course uh, this corpse right over here everything else uh, typically has to be custom built and there's a lot of uh, really, really awesome builds of this thing out there, uh, different combinations. I decided to give this to a lady uh, I, that I never worked with before. Uh, her name is Anya, and um, it's been many years. I forget where she is based. I, I think it might be in Norway. I'm not quite certain. 
um, but she's very talented and a very nice turnaround time. She used a lot of sort of mixed media. So let's sort of go through um, the highlights. So the scene is of this fairy essentially leaning on the shield, looking with curiosity um, at this fallen warrior. Now we have a close up, you know, of course the the warrior is essentially already kind of half rotten. You can already begin to see the skull beginning to um, take over the, the face. A lot of the, the flesh has already uh, kind of rotted off. And you can see the cause of death is this uh, old sword essentially going right through his skull. Um, you get the feeling that you know, it's been quite some time since this war fell in battle. And as she's decomposing, uh, the fairy is just sort of looking uh, with interest at this process. Uh, it's a very surreal, uh, beautiful piece. And uh, again, the fairy is beautiful in the source or control art. The, what So did was okay. Uh, let me try to go a little bit closer up because she's looking down, so it's really tricky sort of to get to get her face. So this is. You know, this is the face. It's it's okay. It's nice. You know, uh, there you go. So Anya decided to make her a bit more pale. Um, decided to make the hair more almost like white blonde. Uh, there are other paint-ups where you know she has very more clearly blonde hair. Um, she definitely smoothed out. The, uh, the vinyl so it's very, very smooth, like skin, um, very nice effects. Of course, the fairy is nude, uh, but she's covered up reasonably nicely by the shield. There's a lot of wonderful detail work on the shield itself. The overall feeling is that of rust, of age, um, and she added all this type of effect here to give you the, you know, again, the illusion of moss You're in a swamp. A lot of the vegetation here she added. Uh, the moss on the shield, all wonderful effects. The moss on the sword, the rusted look, you know, and the moss overgrowing across the handle. All very nicely done. You can see kind of, again, the, the decomposition, um, the oxidizing copper. And then um, she decided for the base to make a clear resin, and then she kind of painted it uh, in a certain way. So you almost sort of felt, the, you can almost feel the mud and the algae mixed with the uh, the water. She did some very nice effects on the legs uh, to give it a water effect, the little droplets of water on the legs. Uh, in person, they look fantastic. Water is very difficult. Water droplets and the effect of water droplets are really, really difficult to pull off um, in a statue. And as you can see, um, she did a fantastic job uh, doing so, you can actually kind of appreciate almost the wetness of the, um, you know, of the feet as you know, it sunk into the lake. Um, so you know, overall, a beautiful build. Uh, it did come with, uh, oh, and of course here you can see the sort of the gossamer wings. Uh, nice effect right there. Okay, uh, let me do a little bit of close up here. Again, hopefully you can appreciate the, the water effects. There you go. Now, um, uh, now, again, I think the overall effect is very good. It, it came with some problems. You know, the sword had to be actually super glued in place. It, it's supposed to be at this angle, but um, there was too much space drilled on the undersurface of the base, and there was too much of a space. So if you just put the sword, it wouldn't stay. It would actually just drop which made it look really silly. So there wasn't a great way of um, fixing that problem. So I just basically super glued it into position. So there you, you, know, you have it. So it's in perfect position now. Uh, another thing I, I wish uh, I could have been a bit more clear perhaps is you know, maybe just make her face have a little bit more texture. Um, she does seem very, you know, for lack of a better term, not bland. I don't want to use bland but she seems very pale and washed out. And maybe that was um, the effect that the artist was going for because again, uh, we wanted to go for this more ethereal quality. 
uh, a more dreamlike quality but it might be nice to have a, just a bit more color um, for instance on the eyes um, the face the hair just to set her off a little bit more um, but again you know this type of thing with, that you take for granted you know, all had to be smoothed um, and smoothed out and all of that to you know make it look good uh, and of course she did a great job with the effects of the base you know again putting in a lot of uh, a plussing a lot of added elements to give you that realism and you know from afar it really does you know she really did um, pull off a very nice effect of the fairy uh, kneeling in water uh, which again you, know, you have to use clear resin it's very difficult I think to pull off uh, correctly so hopefully you know you'll get a chance to take a look at the Luis Ro uh, Royal uh, Wings of Reflection painting it's one of my favorites from him uh, very very beautiful and uh, this is a nice little tiny kit to sort of recreate that painting um, I have two others from Soul, uh, the, the company Soul Kits. Uh, one of them painted by John Allred is one of his earlier works, and it's another amazing piece called Immaculate. Uh, that one actually is resin. And then I have a final one called Summon Guardian, which is based off of his artwork called The Acacia Leaves. And um, that hasn't been built by anybody yet, and when I have some time, I'll probably have John uh, have a go at that because there's going to be a little bit of diorama that will need to be built around it to really, I think, bring out its full potential. And Summon uh, Guardian is another a vinyl kit. But this one uh, is their rarest by far. Uh, and uh, I'm pretty happy again to get an original and to have it built up so amazingly uh, and beautifully uh, by Anya. So hope you, know, you enjoy this quick little review of Wings of Reflection. I hope it inspires you to sort of check out uh, the artwork of Louis Royal, you won't regret it. He's an amazing artist. And until next time, do take care. Bye-bye.